Hi everyone, welcome back to GM Details and to episode 2 of the Corsa series where I'll be transforming this 12 year old Vauxhall or Opel in Europe Corsa. If you haven't seen episode 1 yet, it's fine, you don't need to watch them in sequence, but please do watch them all. In this episode, I'll be giving the exterior a full machine polish with Ferecla G3 Pro new all-in-one polish. Let's get into it. In the last episode, I washed, mechanically and chemically decontaminated the car in preparation for polish, but there's just one job left to do. Farekla were kind enough to send me this new G3 Pro all-in-one polish to try out along with some DA pads and a few other bits I'll be reviewing in a future video. I've never used the product before so this is going to be a diary of my own experience on the day with it. As clean and shiny as the car looks in the sunlight, we've got some less than perfect paint, particularly bad on the bonnet. So I'm going to opt for the blue cutting pad, mainly for speed as I don't have a lot of time left in the day. This is immediately after the wash and decontamination and also in direct sunlight, but panel temperatures are not very warm. So let's just see how that combo are going to work together. I'm laying down a test square on the bonnet, roughly the size of each polishing set will be approximately two and a half times the pad size. This would help you determine whether a certain pad or polish combination would work best, but as this is the polish that I'm going to be using, it's really just to help see how the pad works with it more than anything else. Now normally I'd be using a softer pad using an all-in-one polish. I'll do a thorough test of both the G3 pads in a future video comparing the cut of the two, but today I've opted for the harder blue cutting pad. The polish feels like it's got abrasives in it, so I'm hoping the combo will deliver some good results without too much work. Fingers crossed. So as it's a brand new pad, I'm going to prime it with the polish. That just means spreading some around the face of it so that the pad isn't spinning dry, chafing the paint. Some brands recommend a pad conditioner, but I just spread some polish around it and then add a few pea-sized drops of polish on the pad and tap it out on the area to be polished. This just helps prevent polish spraying everywhere when you start it up. It's not what Rupes recommend, but I'm not using Rupes pads or polishes, so I'm sticking with this method this time. Once you've got the polish dabbed over the area, use Speed 1 just to make a film over the area before increasing the speed of the machine polisher up to Speed 4 to start working it with a movement speed of around an inch a second in overlapping passes up left and right all the way to the bottom before changing direction to vertical to do the same. The overlap should be roughly half the size of the pad that you're using and it's important that you keep the polisher level with the panel. It's easy to tell this by marking a line like this on the backing plate so that you can see it spinning. If it's not turning then the polisher isn't level and also not doing its job. The other function of a dual action polisher is the oscillating feature, that's the pad wobble that you can see. Recently I saw an Amazon review of a basics polisher, someone was complaining the pad was wobbling about and not fixed. That's the difference between a dual action polisher and a rotary. So now that you've seen one pass, I'm going to quickly speed through the set to see the results, otherwise you'll all fall asleep. The product boasts no powder and it's certainly true here on this test section. But as this is an all-in-one polish, I was looking for information on the curing time for the protection, at least something to say when I should buff off the residue. But there's no information on that at all, so I guess it doesn't matter when you buff it off. I'll play around with different times as I work through the car, and I'll let you know my findings at the end of the video. You might have recently seen John Delu over at Forensics Detailing Channel test a variety of all-in-one polishes, and this one came out second in test, so I was very excited to see what the results would be on the Corsa, which has never actually had a polish in its entire life, just the odd glaze. 
So this is what it's all about. Has it made any difference to the paint after just this one set? To be quite honest with you, I'm actually blown away with how good it looks. I thought I'd at least have cut it down a little bit, but this is very impressive for an all-in-one polish. Exceptional results and it should give you guys the confidence to pick up a machine polisher and have a go yourself, either with an all-in-one polish like this or maybe even a glaze. Those are stone chips I'll touch in a little later on, but overall I'm very happy with that result. I mean it's never going to be perfect is it, it's got stone chips and it's got dents in it, but now at least it's swirl free. After reading more about the polish online before editing the video, I saw that Rupes Polisher has an oscillations per minute range of around 2800 to 5200 and Ferreclaf recommends the polish be used at 3500 oscillations per minute. So should really be used like a glaze and used at that lower end of the speed setting rather than speed 4 or 5. Using it at speed 4 certainly hasn't affected the product here so it's got that capability for stretching it slightly. It hasn't dried out or dusted at all. The keen eyed among you will have noticed the polisher stall out along the edges there. And that's to protect against the pad burning through the edges of the paint. It doesn't know that you're using a glaze, a polish or a wax, so it's designed to stop turning to prevent damage. It still oscillates though, and that's a scrubbing action, so it's important you're not leaning on the polisher to gain traction, as it were. If you can't get the pad turning by a little manipulation, then you could do that section by hand, or switch to a smaller polisher if you've got one. A light source like a direct LED torch is ideal for an inspection light, checking for swirls or holograms, and either go for another polishing set or if you're happy with it, move on to the next bit. This is quite a good angle to see the oils in the product and see how well the dual action polisher spreads and works the polish around the bonnet, but even an all-in-one polish needs a pad clean after every set. I use a combination of a pad cleaning brush and or a scrunched up microfiber towel. It works just as well. But even with regular cleaning, it can't unclog a pad and it's a good idea to have at least four pads for a car of this size or be prepared to keep cleaning out the one you have, which will just get annoying. I'm only using this pad for the bonnet and the roof, then onto a smaller polisher for everything else, but I'll show you how I clean a pad out after this set. So how does an all-in-one polish work? When you first feel the polish between your fingers it's quite gritty feeling. This is what provides the cutting of the oxidised layer and hopefully swirl marks and holograms disappear. Then as you work the polish with the machine the abrasives diminish down, finishing off the paint to a smoother look. Sometimes even resin filters can fill deeper scratches, giving a much more refined look. Then there's a last step of working in protection which is always never as good as a direct application of a wax or a ceramic coating. That's a weak point on these types of polishes, but the major benefit to the enthusiast is speed and ease of use. Everyone's got their own way of cleaning pads, airlines, pressure washers, even a tyre brush. Rupes have this simple tool which has some bristles and a rubber wave design that will remove the top layer of pad residue ready for another polishing set and you simply turn the machine on and work the brush over the pad till you're happy it's removed enough to continue. Or like I said earlier, if there's too much residue in the pad, change the pad for a new one. Now 
Now it's all very well and good using a polish with a machine polisher, but what is hand application like? This takes me back to days of mer polish and a microfiber, and I'm happy to report that it's nothing like that. That stuff was good, but oh my god, how dusty was it? I'm going to apply this working in circles with the plush side of a microfiber and then grab the LED light after I've buffed it off to see if it's knocked out any of those little swirls. Just to show that Vauxhall red paint used to be two coats of single stage paint. Now the flame red is clear coated and there's no red colour transfer to worry about. So the hand application didn't feel as though it was doing anything at all. I think you'd probably be best with a foam applicator and arms like Popeye to make any difference to the swirls. And after checking with the light, that's confirmed. So let's break out the 3 inch polisher. Now I don't know if I've had this on the channel before, but if not, this is the Into Detailing Mini Dual Action Polisher. I've had it a couple of years now and it's a valuable asset to use where the larger Rupes doesn't fit. And I've not got a Rupes Mini, as from my uses, this one makes perfect financial sense at around £100. I had ordered a full set of 3 inch pads for this machine, but I just cannot find them at the moment after I had a garage tidy. And rather embarrassingly, I have to resort to using a very spongy SPTA pad off eBay I first bought when I started watching John at Forensics Detailing, and he recommended this set of pads when you're starting out for machine polishing. Now it's all I've got for now, I'll just have to persevere with it. To be quite honest, the softer pads and the slower speed really does work quite well together and the polish remains oily and you've got all the time in the world to work it. I'm only going to show you this front wing as the video would be over an hour long and better sleep therapy than the Sandman. Let's get it buffed off and check the results with the light. These are Korean Pearl Weave cloths, again from Into Detailing and they're a great general purpose towel for removing waxes and polish residue. I've just ordered more from Wowos, but as they're red, I didn't want a colour clash on film. Hopefully you can see a rich deepness to the paint there after buffing, so the true test will be the swirl finder light. Okay, so the light is showing more swirls than I was getting on the bonnet with the cutting pad. That speaks volumes to me about pad choice rather than productability. Clearly, the pad I was using there wasn't suitable at all, and a slightly firmer one would have worked better, or maybe microfiber or possibly wool. But this isn't a prep for a ceramic coat, it's an enthusiast making his mum's car more enjoyable to look at and drive, so I'm going to leave it like this, as chasing every last swirl isn't what this video is about. This car's paint will never be perfect, and I'm not after perfection. I'm after a smile on my mum's face and I think she'll be really happy with this level of shine. And to add to that shine, I'm going to apply a layer of Blitzed Detailing Slick, the ceramic quick detailer for protection and gloss for up to three months durability.
The blitzed detailing slick ceramic quick detailer is just the icing on the cake. I'm so happy with how this car's turned out in a day. A very long and tiring day, a lot of hard work and I'm ready for a well earned beer or two. But not just yet. I'll just give you a quick rundown of my thoughts on the Ferricla all-in-one polish from my use of it today. Positives. It's great value at £15 RRP for 500ml bottle. You can get it cheaper, I've seen it on Amazon for a little bit less money and I'll pop that link in the description for you to check out. I think it's a great starting product for anyone looking to get into machine polishing as it could lead you into trying more advanced cutting and finishing polishes in the future. Its ease of use is a major positive, you couldn't really get a much easier polish to use. Very forgiving when using with a machine polisher as long as you don't push it too far. Now I personally feel that this gives a better result than the Autoglym Super Resin Polish because I feel that that concentrates more on filling minor scratches and swirls rather than correcting them. So for that, this gets my vote. There was no problems whatsoever buffing off the residue no matter how long you left it and there was no dust on it whatsoever. So I really love it for that too. And with the Vauxhall flame red paint, I just felt it enriched it. It left it a really deep, wet looking gloss. And that, for me, was a major positive. And the negatives, I really feel that I'm kind of nitpicking a bit here, but the bottle cap doesn't really lend itself too well for using with a machine polishing pad. By hand, there wasn't much swirl removal used by the hand application. I wouldn't like to have to go around the whole car by hand, that's far too much effort for me. It's certainly well worth investing in a machine polisher if you're going to use any kind of polish on your car. Thank you again to Verecla for sending the polish to try out. I've also went ahead and bought another bottle for myself, I really like it that much. And also thanks to Blitz Detailing for sending a few of their newly relaunched products to beat the financial crisis. And as ever, thanks to you guys for watching. I could do with a few more of you watching, so if you know of anyone who might be interested in detailing, they're more than welcome to subscribe. In the next video, it's the final part of this trilogy, the dreaded interior disaster. I'll leave you with a before and after spin round the Corsa. See you guys in the next one. Take care. Cheerio bye.